Hello everyone, this is Mrs. Pagan working with you today on functions and their graphs. We're going to go ahead and get started with the definition of a relation. A relation is a mapping or pairing of input values with output values. Now, you can represent these many ways, so I'm going to go over all of those. All right, we're going to start with a mapping diagram. Let's kind of change um, the color we're using. So, one of the ways you can represent a relation is with a mapping diagram. And I want you to keep in mind the difference between um, these because we're going to sometimes say represent it using a mapping diagram and you have to know what that looks like. So it kind of looks like two ovals and what happens is um, the relationship is shown from these. So for example, if I had the number one in the input values and it corresponded to the number five, um, that's how you would draw it. And if I had a value of three corresponding with negative two, this is what I would do to show it in a mapping diagram. All right, another representation of this would be through a table. So when we create a table, we usually have um, an input value, most likely called the x, and an output value, most likely called the y, but it could be any variable. Um, and in this case, we would say that if the input value is 1, then it goes with 5, as you can see in the diagram. And if it's 3, then it matches with negative 2. That would be our output. So that's another way of representing the same um, information. All right. From the table, we can go into ordered pairs. And basically, what they look like is two sets of parentheses with a comma in between. So here's a parenthesis. So I would list this as 1, 5. And the next one as 3, negative 2. Now, if you can write something in order pair, that means you can definitely graph these. So we're going to go ahead and represent our next part as a graph. And so we have the y-axis we're drawing. We have the x-axis we're drawing, and then we're going to go ahead and plot these two wonderful points. We're going to go over 1 and up 5, and here's one point, and we're going to go over 3 and down 2. So here's the other point, representing that relation as a graph. And last but not least, we can represent these relations in an equation form. And in this case, the equation that corresponds would be y equals negative 7 over 2x plus 17 halves. Um, yes, I did calculate this using slope um, and finding the b, the y-intercept. All right, let's kind of continue um, as we figure out what is the relation and the five different ways we can represent them. What is then domain? Well, in this case, the domain is known as a set of input values. So as I was saying, the, the set of numbers 1 and 3 are input values. In this case, the x values are the input values, input values, and so on. We can also say that it is the, in this case, for our example above, 1 and 3 are the domains of our example. Well, the range, on the other hand, is a set of output values. And I'm pretty sure you're already way ahead of me here. Um, the example above then will give us the output values of 5 and negative 2, because that's what we end up getting for our output values. So um, if I want to be a little bit more detailed in my input, and I'll put values in my mapping diagram. Uh, the first set of values in the little oval would be my input, and the second one would be my output. And I can say the same thing for my x values. I could say that this first part would be my input, and the second part would be my output. And I could even do the same for my points. Um, the first set of numbers would be my input, 
and the second set of numbers would be my output. Um, I can also say that's my domain, range, domain, range, domain, and range. So uh, a lot of good terminology, a lot of good information there. I'll make sure you review it, please. All right, let's go uh, ahead and start talking about a, a function. And a function is basically relates an input to an output. And uh, when we are referring to a function, we tend to, especially in the higher levels, use function notation. And I'm going to kind of show you what that looks like. So one way to do it is f of x equals 3x plus 4. Notice how I read it. Another one could be g of x equals x plus 1. So these are uh, using function notation. So function notation is things like f of x or g of x, h of x, um, t of x. So those are how we read them and how we write them. Um, a lot of people get scared from that, but please don't. So I want to show you a quick example of what this looks like. So for example, if I were to say graph the function, let's do the one above, g of x equals x plus 1. In my mind, I don't get too scared because I see this as y equals x plus 1. Um, these mean the same thing. g of x equals x plus 1 and y equals x plus 1 to me. So it's not as scary and I hope um, your fear is gone already from it. So what we're going to do is go ahead and graph them. So I'm going to make a table of values. So here are the x values and the y values and I'm going to select the x values and I'm going to try to do ones that aren't too um, far away from 0. So I'll start with negative 2, negative 1. I'll, we'll also test 0, 1, and 2 just to stay in the, the closeness of this graph. And then we're going to go ahead and input the values. So for example, if x is negative 2, we're going to go ahead and input it right there. And negative 2 plus 1 would give us negative 1. We're going to replace that for y. If this was negative 1, it would be negative 1 plus 1 is 0. If this was the number 0, 0 plus 1 would be 1. If this was the number, let me erase it so it doesn't get too messy. Oh, sorry. Um, if that was just a 1, then it would be 1 plus 1, right, is 2. And then if the x value is 2, we would replace that with 2. And 2 plus 1 is 3. So those are all the values that we have. That's our relation, right, represented as a table. So now we're going to go ahead and take that, and we're going to put it on the x and y coordinate plane. So negative 2 down 1, that's one of our points. We have negative 1, 0, so we'll stay right there. We're at 0 and up 1. We are over 1 and up 2 and over 2 and up 3. So here is what our line looks like. Let's draw it with this color. Try to make it as straight as possible because it is a line. And that is the graph of our relation that we have. So well done. Let's keep going. Um, now let's kind of try to do some of these examples of everything we talked about above. As you can see, it says identify the domain and range. Um, and they gave us a relation in a mapping diagram. So let's go ahead and look at it. Well, we know that the domain is the input values, and that's the first set. So our domain in this case is negative 3, 2, and 3. And then the range is the output value. Well, that's the second oval. So we have 0 and 1. Those are, it's like a list that we're making. It says, then tell whether the relation is a function. Okay, so what we're looking for is, is there one input and one output? So here's how I, I think about it. If I were to ask you for negative 3, what, who is negative 3 paired up with? You would only say 0. And if I were to ask you, who is 2 paired up with? You would give me the answer 1. Okay? 
And then if I were to ask you who is 3 paired up with, you would also give me the answer 1. Notice that for every one number I gave, you gave me one number as well. Therefore, it is a function. So it says, lastly, graph the relation. So we're going to go ahead and plot the points. I like to write my points, so I'm going to write negative 3, 0 is one point. The other one would be 2, comma, 1. And the last one will be 3, comma, 1. So we're going to go ahead and plot those three points. Negative 3, 0. Over 2 and up 1 is 2, comma, 1. And 3 over 3 and up 1. So this is a function and we have graphed it and done all the above. Now sometimes it's easier to understand what a function is by giving an example of what's not a function. Okay, um, And we're going to kind of talk about those more in, uh, in the next part. So let's kind of look at this. It says what's the domain? So we're going to go ahead and list all the input values. Negative 3, 1, and 2. We're going to go ahead and list the range, which is the output values. Negative 1, 1, 2, and 3. And then it says, tell whether the relation is a function. Okay, so this is where you have to be careful. So let's kind of go ahead. When I say negative 3, your answer could be negative 1 or it could be 1. Since when I said negative 3, you gave possibly two answers to me, this makes the, this relation not a function. For when I said one number, you gave me possibly two. Not okay, guys. So therefore, this function relation is not a function. And we're going to go ahead and graph it anyways. So here's what it looks like. When I say negative 3, one of the points will be negative 3 comma negative 1. The other one will be negative 3 comma 1. Then with 1, we have matching that with 3. It's kind of going across. So 1 comma 3. And with this 2, we are matching it with the other 2. So 2 comma 2. So we're going to go ahead and plot these points. And here's what it looks like. Negative 3 down 1. Negative 3 up 1. 1 over 3 and 2 and over 2. So if you look at it, you can tell that this is not a function. And let me tell you how. We have this thing called the vertical line test. So I'm going to go ahead and use um, red. The vertical line test means for every vertical line, only one point should be touched. In the first part, you can see it works. In the second one, however, the first line I draw has two points on it. Therefore, it is not a function. Vertical line test is another way we can use to tell whether something is a function or not. Well done. Let's continue. We're almost done. It says, don't forget, f of x is not a function notation for y. Because sometimes we can use g of x, h of x, and so on. So remember that really quick as we continue the lesson. All right. Last part is decide whether the function is linear or not. So if the function is linear, it has linear qualities. So I'm going to go straight to b because this is a linear function because it's in the format of y equals mx plus b. That's how I could tell. And it says then evaluate the function when x equals negative 3. Well, we can write x is negative 3. So I'm going to replace the x with negative 3. And we end up with negative 3 times, go ahead and replace it again with negative 3 plus 4. Notice I don't do anything to the g of negative 3. I just keep writing it. And then I simplify this number. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9 plus 4. Well, that means g of negative 3 is equal to 13. And that's our final answer. Um, we are going to be talking about this one in class. All right, uh, But go ahead and just kind of check it out and tell me, what do you think? Do you think it's linear or not? You did a great job today. Uh, thank you for hanging in tight. We will see you in class. Can't wait.